Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chris Caesar. I'm a landscape photographer from York and I use the Canson Infinity range of fine art papers. Now this is the second in a series of a few short videos showing you some of the papers that I use. We're going to be looking at a print um, and we're going to be looking at sort of trying to understand a little bit more about why I choose these papers for the types of pictures that I make and also we're going to have a little look at the actual print as well, the actual image and chat about the composition a little bit. So today, as I promised, yesterday we looked at a matte paper and today we're going to look at one of the uh, glossy papers and we're going to look at this paper which is perhaps my favourite paper ever invented. Uh, this is Canson's Platine Fibre Rag. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the paper when we've just had a look at today's image and I'm going to explain to you why I particularly like this paper, what benefits it gives me. Okay, so let's have a look at the picture that I've chosen for today. I've, I've selected this picture to make this print. Um, this is a, from a trip, one of the first recce trips that I made to Venice before I started running the workshops there. Uh, and I really like this picture. Um, I think it's important, there are lots of ways that landscapers go about what they do. And one of my favourite sort of results is when a picture has a nice flow and there's kind of a story to it, and it takes the viewer on the journey. And if you look at this picture, I've tried to create a composition that's interesting, obviously, um, but that takes the viewer on the journey. So, for example, let's just have a look. So, in the foreground, we've got this wonderful angular shape that adds lots of interest to the initial part of the picture that the viewer is going to see. And then the eye, it can wander in a variety of ways. It can wander down here and come to this end. And this building here is quite important, I feel, because it anchors the picture on this side. It gives the picture a finish um, and a little bit of information to the viewer about perhaps how wide this area is. Without that, we wouldn't be giving that information. So the eye can wander down here to this lovely picture. It can also go down the canal through the heart of the image and out this way. But the bridge itself I've decided to play centrally because I feel as though this plays an important role in taking the eye across to the other side of the picture. So this leading line is bringing you to this corner, this brings you to this corner. But whichever one of those you go down, you meet the bridge. And the bridge kind of brings you back to the other way in this lovely little window and the lamp up here in the top left. I thought that this area was important, this little area, this triangle of, of interest with the circle, circular window, the lamp and this little balcony. So the balcony is in, in its entirety, which means, again, there's another little bit of wall here anchoring the picture over on that side. It's full of greys, it's full of blacks, it's full of bright colours, um, but it's quite subtle and this paper is fantastic for that. So this is the image that we're going to be looking at today. Okay, so why did I choose this paper? Well, I think it goes back to a process that I started a long time ago, maybe 13 years ago, 14 years ago, when I felt the need to find a manufacturer that would give me the tools to put down on paper something that would best show all the effort that's gone into making that image. So all those early starts, all that planning, all the revisits because the weather wasn't right when we first went. Um, that's before we even talk about starting to work with the elements that are there when we're actually on site, the composition process. And that's before we even think about all the processing that we do, whether it's complicated processing, blending, or whether in my case it's simple processing because we use filters at time of capture to try and get as much right as we can then but yes, everything still needs to go through a raw converter and be processed. Um, so there's a lot of effort goes into each picture and I wanted to find something that would let me put it down on paper in the best way that I possibly could forever. And I came across Platine maybe seven years ago and it blew me away. The level of detail is fantastic. Um, it's a pure cotton paper, which is important to me. It's got no optical brightness which means it's going to have a long life, it's not going to discolour, there's no acids in there. It's got a fantastic feel, um, it's a fibre-based paper, 100% uh, cotton as I say, but it's got this fibre feel to the back, 
Um, it's very easy to handle, the rolls are a dream to use. Uh, some papers you get the roll out of the box, you do the print, everything looks fantastic and then the machine cuts the print and it coils up like a spring and it's very difficult to work with but the platine is quite pliable, it's a pleasure to work with. It's got a slightly speckled surface, um, it's a typical um, burrito, traditional burrito type look but it's not overly glossy. Um, I would kind of consider this to be more of a semi-gloss than a full gloss. Um, and it's perfect for what I need. Uh, one of the things, the three things that I've told you before that I look for in a paper, exceptional detail. This is perhaps the paper that I've found in life that shows the most detail in any photograph I've ever printed. I love this paper. Um, also, it's got a fantastic D-Max, which means that these areas with the blacks where I need the blacks are going to be there. But one thing about this paper that it's renowned for is its ability to work with the whole range of tones from white to black. So greys, this paper produces superb greys. And if you look at this particular picture, there's lots of mid-tones in there. There's lots of sort of light to mid greys, um, which this paper is an absolute dream for. So I use it because it feels good, it looks good, and it lets me put down on paper the colours and the tones that I've captured during composition. So there you have it, that's today's presentation. Uh, one thing I'd like to say, I've had a couple of emails asking me how you go about finding a paper manufacturer to go with in the first place, and that's a tricky one. Um, it's taken me a long time, it took me a long time to find this company um, and to understand what they could offer me with their, not just the range of papers and the looks on offer, but also the quality of the paper, the engineering, the, the history that goes into it the knowledge that they have to give me a paper that I can get my work down in the best way that I possibly can. Uh, what I would say is find a manufacturer that you have heard of, that you know, that you trust, maybe that someone else uses, uh, who says lots of nice things about them. Uh, most manufacturers do sample packs. Canton certainly goes to the sample pack. Get the sample pack, it's gonna have examples of lots of different papers in, lots of maybe four or five, six shiny papers, there's going to be three or four matte papers, some textured, some plain, and yet, to be perfectly honest with you, you're not going to end up using them all, but you can see them all, and you can see how maybe your work looks on those papers. There's going to be some images that you have that suit a particular paper, so do you want to compromise and print that on a paper that maybe doesn't work so well, or do you want to have a pack of that paper in as well, so that when you get that type of image, you can lay down on paper the vision that you had when you made the picture. So I'd say get a sample pack, download the ICC profiles, Canson have a whole host of ICC profiles for all different types of printers and um, this is going to make sure that you get decent colours, the right amount of each colour, the right density of the inks on the paper and you're going to get fantastic results. So that's what I'd recommend and like I say Canson do sample packs, check it out online, get yourself one ordered. Thank you.